Very excited to have Coach Jeff Hand today with us today, and he's been a member for a number of years and kind of came on the scene and uh, several people who were chamber members and diplomats started working out with them and have, have, have not only have they seen results, he's, 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 he's just one of these people that when he talks, you just love to listen to him. So we're very excited to have him here today. Coach Jeff, you've got a great story, your own personal story as well. But uh, we're excited to have you. And tell us how we can make 2021 into our best year ever. Well, hey, first off, I just want to, um, hey, thank you, Jack, for this opportunity. And also going to shout out Troy and Christy and all the other uh, chamber members that have really uh, been there for me and really uh, encouraged me to uh, immerse myself in the chamber. Of course, Mary Hildebrandt, um, just all of you guys since day one um, have just embraced me. First day, I remember being just welcomed in. And since then, I can tell that it's, it's a tight community and it's a great chamber to be a part of. So I'm really honored to be here today to speak to you guys. Um, I run a company called Training for Your Stockyards. Uh, we're actually a personal development company, we just disguise it in fitness. All right. So um, today I am going to give a uh, presentation. So I'm going to click the uh, share um, screen share and hopefully it goes over well. If it doesn't, you guys let me know. Um, but uh, again, I guess let's go ahead and uh, get into the screen share here, which I should have right here. Let's hope it works. So can you all see my screen here? Jack, can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. You're, you're good. All right. So, um, yeah, so basically I was asked to uh, present for you guys on, you know, how can we get a plan in place um, to, you know, look better, feel better, um, and just really be the best versions of ourselves. And so if you're not somebody today that's really excited about weight loss or building muscle tissue or anything health related, that's okay. You can take the analogies I use with weight loss and just apply them to your business. Because guys, let's be honest, it's all connected, right? The healthier you are, the better the business that you're going to run. So imagine if right now you are a successful business owner and you're not working out, you're not really watching your food choices, you're just doing your thing and you're crushing business. Imagine what's going to happen when you start, you know, making better food choices and making time for fitness, the potential 10 times, 100 times your business. And that's what today's about. So, hey, wow, it begins with now, you know, it begins right now. So that's what I'm going to help you guys to do today. So, hey, I learned a long time ago, a long time ago that the mind, it's going to forget. But the pen and paper, it's always going to remember. So if you are looking to get better, I urge you, take notes today. Whether you type it in the note chat for the Zoom or you write it down, what I don't want to happen is this just to be entertainment. To be like, man, that guy's motivating. Or, hey, that was kind of cool. And then that's it. I hope you guys take away something today that you can start applying in your lives and in your businesses. So as we look at that, the way that I see every new year, guys, it's 365 new pages, 12 new chapters, and it's one new book. And guess who's the author? You guys are the author. So that means that the story can go however you decided to go. That's why I'm kind of over here and, oh, man, 2020 is done. Thank God. It's like, actually, 2020 was a massive year of growth for my non-essential small business. Most gyms tanked during the pandemic. My company grew. And so hopefully the stuff that I share with you guys today will show you just how to do that. So, again, I'm challenging you because right now, in a year from today, you're going to wish you would have done something. Right. And the saying goes, uh, when was the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago, actually. When's the next best time? Right now. Right now. OK, so um, at Training for Warriors, being a personal development company, we have to target habits and mindsets and characteristics. Right. And the way that we do that is actually through storytelling. So if you don't have your goals physically written down right now, whether they're health goals, business goals, financial goals, family goals, whatever it is, then hopefully the story motivates you to do so. And the stories of this archer, right? This archer, man, he's so good, right? He's just, man, it's like every time he shoots, he hits a bullseye. And so every competition that he gets into, he cleans up shop. He's first place every time. Nobody ever comes close to this guy, right? And so he starts to get cocky. Right. He's just so good. He gets cocky. He starts to blindfold himself. Right. So even blindfolded still, he's just ripping, man. He's just bullseye, bullseye, bullseye. Nobody comes close. Well, one day after one of his competitions, this young cat comes up to him and says, hey, man, I bet I can pick anybody in this crowd right now. And if you just let me pick one condition, they'll beat you. 
they're going to beat you. And so the guy is cocky and confident. He says, you know what? I'll take that. And uh, I'll even do it blindfolded. And that's what the young guy was really counting on. So uh, he says, all right, so what is this condition? He said, well, hey, I get to put the target wherever I want. And so in that moment, as confident and talented and sure of himself that Archer was, he knew in that moment that he was going to lose. Because without a target, you can't hit it, right? So what that means, guys, if you don't have, if you're not starting this year with the end in mind, where you want your business to be, where you want your body to be and your health, you're never going to hit it, right? Like you're going to end up waking up every day, putting in work, exhausting yourself and feeling unmotivated and frustrated, overworked, overstressed, whatever, because you don't have a goal. You don't have a target. You don't have a bullseye. So guys, actually what I'm going to do today is give you guys a rundown on how to set awesome goals. Because, hey, goal setting, it's a skill, right? It's a skill. Uh, we all suck at goal setting in the beginning, right? Like when I sit down with somebody, I'm like, all right, so what brings you in? I want to lose weight. Oh, great. How much? I don't even know. By when? Hmm, haven't really thought about that, right? So goal setting isn't innate. It's a skill set, which means the more that you work on your goal setting abilities, the better that you're going to get at it. And so today, uh, if you're going to be a goal getter, you got to be a goal setter first. And so that's what I'm going to help you guys do is this is 10 steps. These are prove it, right? 10 steps to get whatever it is that you want in 2021. So if that is a better body, like legit, if you guys want to lose weight, take these notes. I'm going to actually give you the plan to get you guys to lose weight this year, right? There's no gimmicks. There's no quick fixes. But if you're looking to lose weight, just follow the tips I'm going to give you today. All right. So the first thing, this is like the common error. Again, most people, they don't even take the time to write their goals down, right? So you want to make sure that it's physically written down. Guys, there's tons of research that shows you the power of mechanically writing down a goal. And actually, this month in my program, we've been talking about resolutions. And what research shows you is you're 42% more likely to achieve a goal just by writing it down. No other factor. So, hey, I want to make $100,000 this year. If you just say it and thank it, that's like a wish and a dream. And those are great, but nobody really achieves those, right? But as soon as you write it down, you now just increase your odds of achieving it by 42%. Like, that's crazy, right? So write your goals down. But it's like, what do you want to achieve, right? What is it that you want, man? Like, what do you really want this year, right? Give yourself permission to set big goals. Some people are just like, man, I'm not ready for that goal, or I don't deserve that goal. I don't deserve that much money. Hey, you deserve everything, right? And so give yourself permission to set big goals and go get those things, right? And of course, begin with the end in mind. So when you wake up each day, you know where you're going, right? You have that beacon that's going to guide you through your day when it gets tough, when you feel tired, right? And then, of course, I'm sure we're all familiar with the SMART acronym. Make your goals specific. Lose weight how much? Today, I'm going to talk about 50 pounds, right? I'm going to talk about a 50-pound weight loss. So again, make sure it's measurable. Hey, my goal is to have more energy. Well, how are we going to measure that, right? So maybe it's less coffee or, you know, find metrics to make sure that you're actually making progress towards your goal. And of course, attainable and realistic, those kind of tie together, meaning like, hey, if you've never worked out before and you're going to say, hey, I want to lose 50 pounds by the end of this month, hook it up. Um, that's really not attainable or realistic, at least not healthily, right? And then, of course, timely. You know what timely means to me? It means deadlines, Right. Like in school, you had deadlines, maybe with your jobs or certain deadlines. When you have deadlines, it creates pressure, a healthy pressure to finish. So if you do want to lose weight, by when? When are you going to lose that weight? If it's, hey, I want to have X amount of employees hired, by when? Set a date for yourself. I think people are afraid of setting dates because they're afraid of failing. They're afraid of not delivering. Well, hey, man, like fear ain't going to get you a good business. Fear is not going to get you healthy. So man, put that pressure on yourself, right? Make sure it's timely. So guys, first one that you guys should have written down is write it down, right? Write it down. Now, again, I base this off of most people when they're writing goals, they have several goals. It's not just one goal. So if we have several goals, we got to prioritize, right? Because only uh, one butt can only ride one horse, right? Like if you try to tackle too many things at once, you are going to make a lot of errors and you're most likely going to become unmotivated and not achieve any of them. And if you do, it's not going to be the best quality work. So let's say, for example, hey, coach, I want to lose weight, but I also want to like tone up, but I also want to build muscle, right? So anatomy and physiology wise, those are all three different competing goals that you can't achieve at the same time. So you got to ask yourself, all right, what's the most important to me right now? What do I want right now? And that's number one. That's what you focus on, right? Again, if you have all these 
you know, goals all over the place, you just, it's, it's going to get you nowhere. So prioritize your goals. And why is that? Because we all have the same amount of time, guys. We're all given the 168 hours in a day. And so I made a little quick one-off here because right now you might be thinking, coach, I'm strapped, bro. I'm strapped. I got no time. I know you're going to talk about working out and meal prepping. I still have time for that. Like you don't know, I got three kids. I run a business, all that stuff. I got you. Everybody's busy. So here's what I'm going to show you. Um, hey, so if, if, if you take 168, subtract 60 hour work week, okay? Subtract another eight hours throughout the week for your commute in and out of work. Uh, subtract eight hours a night because we're going to talk about sleep. That's 56 hours. So take 56 off that. Uh, take seven hours a week out for your family. And then, hey, for other responsibilities uh, and duties, run the kids to, you know, practice, whatever it is, take another seven hours out. You know what that leaves you? I kid you not. I did the math. It's 30 hours left over every single week. That's 4.3 hours a day that you have left to devote to growing your business or growing yourself via reading, you know, working out, whatever it is. And if you're like, I don't have that time, it's because it's getting lost, right? 10 minutes on social media, guys, is 60 hours a year. What can you do in 60 hours? Imagine if you worked out for 60 hours throughout 2021, right? So guys, don't underestimate the power of just 10 minutes, right? So Step two, you got to prioritize, right? Because at the end of the day, your life is measured by the things that are important to you. Like that's just the cold, hard reality. And if you're like, well, I don't know what's important to me. Well, just go look at your bank account. Go check out your bank account right now and you'll see what's important to you, right? Now with big goals, right? Because hopefully you guys are setting big goals, big business goals, big health goals. But let's say I got a 50 pound weight loss goal. I want to lose 50 pounds by uh, December 31st, 2021, because the doctor said, if I'm down 50 pounds, I can get off high blood pressure medication. I'll have more energy for my kids and I'll be able to live longer. So I got my goal set. It's specific and it's powerful, right? But with that big goal, it's really far off. And human psychology breeds off of dopamine, right? Like we need these dopamine hits that say, all right, we're moving in the right direction. So that's why you got to set these daily actions, these little mini goals to keep the subconscious, the ego moving forward, i.e. staying motivated. So what that means is by the mile, it's a trial. By the yard, it's hard. But by the inch, it's a cinch. So you see that big tree right there? Imagine if that tree was in your backyard right now, Jack. And I said, hey, man, I need you to chop this down by this afternoon. You'd be like, that's impossible. And I'd be like, yeah, it is. But if I said, hey, Jack, uh, I want you to go outside and every day around lunch, I want you to hit that tree with an ax five times. Doesn't matter how big that tree is, eventually it comes down. And that's what the daily actions are. So whether it's, hey, uh, you know, get out of debt, uh, grow my business, you know, marketing campaigns, whatever it might be, or losing weight, you got to have a daily checklist. I've been a big checklist guy for years. Wait, you can't see it. Okay, so I have, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, so um, I keep daily checklists, and these are the things that help me to grow my business, so again, I'm a health and fitness professional, I've been helping people lose weight and get in shape for over a decade now, so I'm going to show you guys the recipe to lose weight, like, kid you not, it's right here, and it's not sexy, I'm not going to give you some like, oh man, you got to eat every three hours, or hey, just eliminate, eliminate this food, or eat this superfood, there's no buzzwords here, and that's why I guess most people don't do it because it's really not sexy. Uh, number one is, um, hey, what the American Heart Association recommends is uh, you, need, you need to be moving your body 30 minutes a day, five days a week, right? Something that just gets the heart rate up, okay? Because weight loss is taking in less energy than your body actually needs. And the first part of that equation is through exercise. So it doesn't have to be like, you know, uh, running or anything like that. Just something that gets your heart rate up, walking the dog, going for a hike, maybe you like to swim, maybe you do like the biker jog. That's great. But they only recommend 150 minutes a week. Like it's 30 minutes a day, right? Like that's, that's easily doable by anybody, no matter how busy that you are. They say you do that or something more vigorous. Maybe you are strapped to the nines. You're running three businesses. You got three kids, man. Okay. So only 25 minutes, three days a week of something a little bit more vigorous, right? That could be taking a body pump class. That could be lifting weights uh, in your home, watching a video, whatever it is, they recommend just three days at 25 minutes can produce the same effects on your heart and health that the 30 minutes can do. They also recommend, and what I personally recommend is especially as you get older, you need to be resistance training. So they recommend two days a week, right? Hey, lifting some weights, putting some actual resistance through your body. That could be bands, that could be body weight, dumbbells, barbells, kettlebells, it doesn't matter. But the first part is you gotta make time for exercise. You gotta make time for exercise. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Now, calories, um, I don't really talk a lot about numbers and 
you know, counting calories as, as I don't think it's a sustainable way to lose weight, but in the beginning, you need to understand how many calories your body needs to lose weight and then track. And you got to be honest with yourself. It's where people, you know, they'll admit things they drink or had hey, just, oh man, just a handful of uh, M&Ms coach. Yeah. But if you did that every day for the whole month, now you just ate 10,000 calories of M&Ms and that's why you're not losing weight. So what I recommend right now is like my fitness pal or um, some other free calorie tracker just to make you aware, right? Cause you can only measure what you, uh, uh, you can only manage what you measure. So if you don't know how many calories you're eating, then losing weight's going to be frustrating. Now, after a couple of weeks of doing that, you don't have to worry about counting calories. You'll get the hang of things and the scale will follow. Uh, sleep gains, right? Um, sleep is important guys. That's why I said, get your eight hours. If you're not getting eight hours, you're crazy. Um, if you are that busy, something's got to give. Um, there's so many studies out there that show that people that chronically deprive themselves of sleep, like six hours or less are 50% more likely to die early than somebody that gets eight hours. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, go fact check it. There's tons of studies, PubMed, you can go see, but all they did was look at sleep, sleep, not any other lifestyle factor. So it, the less you sleep, the quicker you die. There you go. The other thing too is, uh, hey, think about a day when you got two hours of sleep. How'd your eating go? Probably pretty terrible, right? Yeah, because sleep is tied to your appetite. Sleep is tied to cognitive function, immune system function. Again, you want to talk about COVID? Yeah, keep chronically undersleeping and just put yourself more at risk for uh, contracting COVID. Guys, you got to make time for sleep. Like, we're adults. We can get to bed on time, right? We're not teenagers that need to stay up till 2 a.m. and sleep in, hitting snooze. Like, those days are gone. So eight hours of sleep, non-negotiable, especially if you're looking to lose weight. Guys, water. Man, most people don't drink a lot of water, right? They just don't. Um, it's in forms of like, you know, uh, cappuccinos and energy drinks and sodas. And so if you start to focus on getting in more water, you're going to cut out calories. Um, but also water is what your body's mostly made of, right? So if you're not drinking anywhere between like 96 to 128 ounces of water, you are shortchanging yourself, right? You've gotten used to this low quality of life. What I mean by that is, uh, hey, coach, I don't need eight hours of sleep. I feel great off six. Now, you've just gotten really accustomed and you've tolerated this lower level of functioning versus if you got eight hours of sleep. Same thing with water. Oh, coach, I feel fine. I don't drink that much water. Right, okay. So now with that being said, weekly schedules, okay? Guys, Remember in high school, like, did you get your GED or your high school diploma because you were just that much of a badass? Probably not. You did it because there was a schedule that you had to follow. Uh, first periods at this time, second periods at this time, lunch is here, then you take this class, then you take this class. The schedule forced you to succeed. So if there's parts in your life, health, business, and you're feeling frustrated, you're just churning wheels and not going where you, you want to go, check yourself because you probably don't have a schedule. Right. The most successful people look at Bill Gates. He breaks this down to 15 minute increments. Right. I'm not that uh, Nazi about my schedule, but I know when my time slots are. I program my time to work out. I program my time to, you know, be with my family, because if you don't, guys, the world's going to take it from you. So, again, get your sleep. And that's what I recommend. Start with your sleep. You know, when you have to wake up. So just subtract eight hours off that. That's when you go to bed, factor in your work, your workouts, you just pepper in your responsibilities into your schedule, then just follow it. Uh, and then, hey, the uh, fifth action, right? So these are your daily actions. I'm working out, I'm monitoring my calories, I'm sleeping, drinking water. And then the last one is just being mindful, right? Because when you are eating, most of us are not present, right? In fact, most of us are not present right now. Like maybe right now you're checking your phone, your mind's already started to wander, right? That's just the product of living in a nation that's so developed. We're just constantly distracted. Our mind's always going. But when you learn to focus down and you're more aware, that's where success is. Meaning when you're actually looking at your food and chewing every bite and listening to your body, you're, you're going to realize you don't need as many calories or as much food as you've been eating. You're like, wow, I'm actually, I'm actually full. I feel, I feel fine holy crap, there's a lot of food left on my plate. Exactly, right? So again, this is a great strategy. I just put a study down here that people that watch TV and ate pizza versus people that uh, ate macaroni and cheese um, versus listening to music, look how much more they ate. People that watch TV ate 36% more pizza and 71% more macaroni than those that were just listening to music. So when you're distracted, you're automatically going to eat more. All right. All right. Now, these uh, next ones will go by quick. So I promise you guys like, oh, my God, he's only on the fourth slide. He's going to be here forever. I am going to be very respectful of everybody's time. But guys, visibility, right? Like if you were guys were to see in my office, 
I have three whiteboards. I have my membership goals. I have my dojo goals and I have my year planner. So when I am not coaching and I'm sitting in my office, I am constantly reminded of my mission. If your goals, number one, are written down, you're doomed. Number two, if your goals are written down, they're out of sight, out of mind, you're doomed. Maybe you save it as like the home screen on your phone, or if you're always on the computer, make it the background of your big goals, because as humans, we get distracted, right? We are emotional creatures. We're going to get tired. We're going to get stressed. We're going to get angry. We're going to get all those things, and all those things can derail you from your mission. Right. So, again, really, how bad do you want it? So make sure it's visible. Right. Because motivation wears off. And what I tell people, hey, for your goals, rinse do every day. Right. I'm tired. Guess what? Everybody's tired. I'm busy. Guess what? Everybody's busy. All right. These are lies that you're telling yourself that you got to just learn to, I guess, be aware when you're telling yourself these lies. And, you know, hey, man, let's get to it now. Revising again. OK, so. If I'm looking to lose weight, guys, I'm going to probably weigh myself in the beginning, probably weekly, right? First thing in the morning after I, I use the restroom, I'm going to weigh myself at the end of every week. Did I lose weight? Because that's going to give me feedback. Did I legit get closer to my goal or not? Because then you course correct, right? It's like, oh, man, you know, um, I didn't prep my dinner last night. So I ended up, you know, giving in to, um, you know, my friend saying, hey, let's go out for burgers, Right. So you just revise your plan like, OK, I need to make sure that I prep my foods on Friday or I'll say hey, my friends are going to convince me. I just know that. Right. Because as you can see in this picture, guys, one small decision now. Right. If you just keep making this little small mistake over and over again, you'll end up here or you can course correct. And then over the long haul, you'll end up here. Right. So small actions is what's going to equal the big stuff. But again, the greatest mistake that you can make is to keep making the same mistakes. Mistakes are part of learning, like you're going to make them. But if you make them every year over and over again, I'm pretty sure that's a definition of insanity. Now, hey, number six, right? Tip number six to get whatever you want in this year, be accountable, right? Right now, we got something going on called Warrior Buddies. We're literally pairing up students to keep each other accountable to the resolutions. Now, guys, accountability, it's uncomfortable. I have deep systems in my business that keep all of my students accountable. Ask Tony, ask Troy, ask Christy, ask anybody that's a part of my program. When you don't show up for a few days, somebody's going to reach out to you. Why? Because we care. But guys, no pressure, no diamonds. If you don't have anybody keeping you accountable and you're only accountable to yourself, there's no pressure. There's no pressure to take action. So yeah, it's easy to eat the bad food. It's easy to skip a workout. But if you tell somebody, hey, I have to lose 50 pounds by the end of this year, keep me accountable. I'm going to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, message me. Dude, you're going to smash those workouts. Because there's something about your ego, your psychology, where you don't have to admit to somebody that you didn't do what you said that you were going to do. Now, some people are okay with that. They just don't have a lot of integrity or character. And hey, that's that's their thing. But odds are, that's not you guys, right? Your business owners, your parents, your, your entrepreneurs, right? Your leaders of this world. So guys, if you aren't already doing this, this is a magical piece. And uh, we pulled out a study that showed, check this out. You ready for this? Um, the likelihood of you achieving a goal increases by 92% when you tell somebody about it. Dude, I should be blowing your minds right now. So if you're keeping it all to yourself, share it with one other person, you're almost 100% more likely to achieve that goal. Like that's insane. So get an accountability person that's gonna check up on your business, on your health, whatever it might be. Now, again, asking for help, it is wisdom and not weakness. I spent the first couple of years running my business being way too stubborn, right? Not asking for help, um, almost ruining my business, right? Making really bad financial decisions, almost wrecking my business because I just didn't ask for help. Now that's uh, almost one of the first things I do. I get mentors, I invest in coaching, right? To help you when you're weak, right? When you don't know, when you're struggling. So again, it, hey, who's in your industry that's just crushing it? Have you read their books? Have you taken their courses? Are you paying for coaching? I have business coaches. I have fitness coaches. It just so happens my business grows every year and I'm in the best shape of my life. Invest in it, guys. Ask for help. Look at this chamber. Look at all the different people that we have. That's, a, again, a huge benefit of being a part of this is you can, man, we have people with insurance and real estate selling businesses, right, in, uh, in the educational system. Like, there should be no reason that we struggle at all as business owners, actually, because we have all the help that we need. We just have to ask for it. Now, again, um, if, if you've read Atomic Habits, see, I told you, Anthony, I reference it at least once a week. Um, he talks about tracking your habits, right? But these are just visual reminders to celebrate the small wins because there's a part of the brain called the amygdala. And what the amygdala does is it scans the environment for danger. 
right? And so right now there's really not any, you know, lions or tigers or bears that are threatening your survivability. So instead it has you constantly looking for danger. What that means is now you gain a perspective of all the stuff you didn't do. Oh man, I lost that sale or, oh man, this happened or, oh man, woe is me this. But when you got these little visual trackers and you have your little daily checklist, you're like, man, no matter how bad today went, look what I accomplished. Right. So the other strategies that James Clear talks about is, you know, hey, just putting a jar. What if like you got to make 20 calls a day and uh, one jar has 20 clips, the other jar is empty. Each call, you just drop a clip in there. It's that little subconscious dopamine hit. Makes you want to make another call, another call, another call. Uh, maybe it's, you know, colored beans or, you know, maybe it's just X's on a calendar. But the goal is to just not break the chain. So number one, visual reminders will help you with the subconscious side. But the other thing is, hey, make sure that you reward yourself. You hit $100,000 this year? Hell yeah, man. Maybe it's a vacation. Or, uh, hey, you lost the 50 pounds? Great. Maybe you go buy yourself X, Y, or Z. Right? So that's that positive reinforcement that, again, takes you out of the equation and allows you just to work a system. So, guys, you got to celebrate the wins. You need a win right now. I get it, guys. We just came out of 2020. Maybe it wasn't a winning year for you. Right? Actually, it was. You just weren't focusing on it. Right? So, again, guys, celebrate your wins. They're out there. You just got to shift your perspective from negative Nancy to, hey, look at all these positive poly things that I can uh, – observe positive poly that's probably not e even a thing but i'm uh there you go right so nine at the end of the day guys planning and preparing over planning and preparing is a is a form of procrastination at the end of the day you got to do the work again guys it's okay to be tired you just can't act tired you're business owners you're leaders right you're gonna be tired you're gonna be worn out and you're gonna be stressed but you can't show it right? Because you got goals and that's why you're here. So number nine is you just got to do the work. And then, hey, last but not least, just like my background says, guys, this is the reason most people don't get what they want. This is the reason people don't lose weight. This is the reason people aren't successful in business because they stopped. All you got to do is just stop stopping. Okay. And uh, here's another one, guys, that I'm going to end with is number one, stop saying tomorrow. I have a real tragic story about um, I am, I would consider myself a master of follow-up. I'm pretty dang good at sales. And so I'm always following up past students, leads, whatever. They're in my pipeline through emails, giving them content, whatever it was. And uh, I was reaching out to this person to come back. I had a really good offer. And uh, I had called her several times, left her voicemails, nothing. And I'm, and I'm sitting here and I think I had a student in front of me or something. And this phone kept ringing. Like it was call after call. I was like, oh my God. I was like, let me answer this. And uh, they were like, hey, this is so-and-so's sister. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And she was like, uh, hey, um, you know, so-and-so, you know, is not gonna be able to come back to the program. I was like, there's like this long pause. And uh, she's like, well, she died. She died last week, right? She had a form of cancer and she was on her way to come back. But you know what? Again, it's not like that could have saved her. What I'm saying, guys, is she'd give anything to come back and to stop saying tomorrow. You only get so many tomorrows in this life. Yeah, I'll start my workout plan tomorrow. Yeah, hey, I'll start doing this tomorrow, right? And then tomorrow becomes tomorrow. And then before you know it, you're gone. Right. It's something like you get like 30,000 days. Right. You get like 30,000 days to live, assuming you live to around like 75 or something like that. So take your current age, multiply it by 365, divide that off 30. That's what you got left. Now, all of a sudden, saying tomorrow has uh, it holds a little bit more weight. Guys, it's about taking action. And hopefully like some of the stuff I've said is like jab you just a little bit because um, that'll help you or help you to take action. And then last but not least. Your health is your wealth, guys. So I'm pretty fired up right now. I don't know if you guys can see, but my core temperature has increased tremendously. I'm sweating buckets right now. So um, guys, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Those were my 10 tips to become more successful, lose weight, whatever it is. Awesome, Jeff. You know, as, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, you know, this guy needs his own cable show. Uh, because man, that is such that is such great advice. I'm gonna. Do you have a couple minutes to stick around and maybe uh, maybe take questions from people? Oh yeah, most definitely, man. Most definitely. I'm I'm gonna just bring every, I'm gonna bring everybody back in here. And if you guys, if you want to, uh, if you want to ask Jeff questions, please just uh, feel free. It's just a you know open open forum here. And he, I mean, what you know. You know, we're so busy, you know, sometimes we forget to do those basic things that you were talking about, Jeff, and uh, that's, it's, uh, 
you know, we just like we have to take a shower every day to uh, to keep ourselves uh, 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 clean and hygienically, you know, acceptable in public. I mean, some of these things we just have to review every day, like you were talking about. I mean, it's really, really good advice. So, if anybody, uh, as I promote you to 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 panelists, I just want to thank everybody for coming again, and just feel feel free. It's uh, you know, you want to, you're all you're all on to talk. So, Jeff, uh, or, or anybody have any questions for Jeff? Just don't ask me about any diets. They're all terrible. They're like, hey, should I do keto or should I do paleo or low carb, high carb? Don't ask me any of those questions. Just eat real food. Just find the foods that you enjoy that are real foods. So I just want to throw that out there because I know there's always the person that's like, hey, what do you think of keto? Or what do you think of, uh, you know, those wraps that you put on your stomach or the detoxes? So my viewpoint is it's all garbage to take your money. So just putting that out there. But if you do have legit questions about anything I presented on, please, I'd be more than happy to uh, expand upon. Well, we do hear we do hear a lot about the, the plant-based diet, right? right. And, uh, um, and organic versus non-organic, but especially the plant-based diet. So right. we've all tried to, to to do better with that. What's your what's your what's your thought on that? What are some of the favorite things that you that are your go-to uh, nutritious foods? Right. So um, basically, when you look at a plant-based diet, you're just looking at a diet that aims to remove a lot of animal-based protein. And so the reason it's made such a big shift is because there's been this surmounting amount of research that's been done over, you know, probably close to the past century on societies and communities that eat mostly plants. And not only is their body weight significantly less, their disease rate is massively lower than societies that eat a lot of animal-based product. So again, I am a nutrition agnostic. I don't subscribe to plan or whatever it is, but my personal take is I don't eat a lot of animal-based protein. I eat some, but a lot of my foods you know, come from, uh, you know, your vegetables, your beans, your lentils, your legumes. Um, vegetables can have actually quite a bit of protein. One cup of broccoli has like five grams of protein. Um, so if, if you love meats and beef and things like that, it's okay. You just want to try to get leaner cuts of it, you know, like the round steaks or, you know, lean ground beef, lean ground turkey, chicken, turkey, fish, so that you're getting in protein, but you're not getting all the fat right? It's the saturated fat and the cholesterol that's in the animal product that as you consume it and some of, uh, not some of, a lot of other factors that can actually perpetuate disease. So I'm not saying that stop eating meat. I'm saying, hey, just be more aware of like how much meat are you actually eating um, versus how many plants you're eating. And um, so that's kind of my take on it. It's like, yeah, everybody needs more fruits and vegetables, but you don't have to become a vegan to be healthy for sure. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Troy? Yeah, hey, Coach, I got a quick question. So, um, you can ask me later, Troy. You're a student, man. Now, I'm I know. <laughs> uh, and I actually put in the chat, man, he's like the most motivating guy I know. And that's what I love about it. It's not just fitness, it's everything. But you mentioned something that me and you've spoke about several times, and that's, uh, uh, you know, having that accountability partner, which I almost consider that kind of a mentor, which that's why I include you on a lot of stuff on business. And we, we talk about business and stuff because I think it's very important to have that. So when it comes to someone getting a um, accountability partner, how important it, is it to choose the right person that's truly going to count, keep you accountable? And how, how would you suggest someone go about that, finding the right person? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a great question. Right? I have. I've already found it. So, but I'm hoping for everybody else. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess what Troy's saying is like, you want to find somebody that has your best interest in mind. So that might be a family member, that might be a coworker, or that might be where you have to do some legwork. And again, reach out to people that are in your industry that are dominating and get a feel for mastermind groups or, you know, other Facebook communities where you feel it's a good fit and then reach out from there. Cause yeah, you can get somebody that's just gonna be like, Oh, you didn't eat your chicken and broccoli. It's easy, dude. Look at me, you know? And uh, so I would definitely, you know, find somebody that has your best interest in mind. Um, but they gotta be like a real true person that'll call you out, but also support you when you need it as, as well. So. Awesome. Any, uh, any, any additional questions, David Ball? Welcome. Good to see you. Hey, sorry for uh, jumping in a little bit late, but I got there right when he started number one. So I took my notes. Coach, thank you very, very much. I enjoyed it very, very much. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you remind me a little bit of uh, kind of what I'm about. And, uh, we've met before about fitness and uh, I'm on fire about it uh, as well. So 
um, you know, I've gotten my run in already today and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, it's an enthusiasm. It's a, it's a, it's a fury. It's a, it's a, a aggressiveness towards taking life uh, and, and squeezing out every bit of it that we can do. And so I really get that from you. I was going to just, my question for you is like, uh, did you, did you have something that happened to you as a youth or something that turned you towards this lifestyle? Uh, or was there a part of your story that you can just say uh, you were a, you were a this before, which was a lesser, and then you went to something, something happened, and you decide made a decision, and you went to uh, this new person that you are now and are on fire. Yeah, so that was me, right? So I grew up in uh, your typical, I guess, North American household. Both parents worked. Uh, my dad traveled a lot, so I didn't see much of him. My mom was a terrible cook. So I grew up on like teen, uh, kid, uh, kid cuisines and, you know, meatloaf and, you know, hamburger helper. And uh, as I got older, my mom just let me do whatever. I didn't grow up in a healthy family. So uh, by high school, I was eating literally like fruity pebbles and fruit loops for like every meal. Like I just would eat cereal. I love cereal. And uh, but I had a friend of mine who was really overweight. He was about 300 pounds and we were best buds. And he had reached out to me that he wanted to lose weight. And I'd already been self-conscious about myself and I, just, I didn't have the ladies. I didn't have a girlfriend. And, um, but uh, I said, yeah, man, I'll start running with you. So I didn't even take it upon myself to take action. I just started supporting my buddy. And uh, we ran all junior year, all senior year. I lost like 45 pounds. Uh, but then I started to seek interest in weight training and uh, started to, you know, get a subscription like men's health. And then my mom bought me a little workout thing. I saved up for my first gym membership. And then I really just started to immerse myself in the science of like, training and nutrition and psychology of the behavioral change. And so I got certified and then I started training around 2007 uh, back at LA Fitness. And then fast forward now, I've, I've worked at LA Fitness, Lifetime Fitness, 24 Hour Fitness. I've built really good businesses there. Uh, but then four years ago, I took the leap to build community. It wasn't no, it, it was no longer just one-on-one. -on -one. It was creating something great that people can be involved in to, as we say, bring out the warrior within, to bring out the healthiest and best versions of themselves. So now it's like, it's this grander mindset of something much bigger than me. It's much more than a six pack. It's much more than crushing a marathon. It's, it's actually helping, it's saving people's lives with fitness now. So when I talk to somebody, it's like, that's what I want to do. I want them to feel what I have to offer so I can like allow them to live longer and to live their best life ever. So yes, I used to be unhealthy and overweight and uh, now I'm not. <laughs> I love that story. <clears throat> All right. Any any final question as we uh, as we wrap up? If not, we just really wanted we. Oh, Tony. Well, one quick thing, I, I keep forgetting to ask you, Jeff, because you know when we go to the dojo, everyone wants to get out. So, my two sugar crunches. I've eliminated sugar from my diet except for two things: coffee creamer and peanut butter. I gotta have at least a spoonful of peanut butter every night. It's just a craving and I can't get rid of it. So coffee creamer and peanut butter, any suggestions? Number one, peanut butter is healthy for you. You just have to make sure that you're buying the peanut butter that doesn't have sugar as the second ingredient. Uh, peanut butter is a healthy fat. So I'd say keep it, bro. It's great. Creamer, again, man, it's like, um, you just got to look at like, it's going to add up over time. But again, it's not about how much. It's the fact that added sugar in the diet, uh, creamers, cookies, cakes, donuts, when sugar has been added to a food by a manufacturer, when it's digested in the body, it wreaks havoc. It's not the same sugar that's in a banana or an apple. Naturally occurring sugar, completely different. But just even like a gram or two of sugar, it lights up the, uh, the reward centers of your brain and it can promote inflammation, right? Which means the joints hurt, the brain becomes inflamed. So you don't know when you're hungry, when you're full, but obviously those little uh, sprinkles of sugar make you crave sugar. So maybe it's only a little creamer now, but then something happens, then you find yourself in like a freaking gallon of ice cream gone or a whole sleeve of Oreos gone because your brain was building that up because of how addicting sugar can actually be. So just be aware of it. Me personally, what I do, man, I'll do black coffee, a little bit of Splenda, and I'll take a core power pro, uh, pro protein shake, just the chocolate flavor, and I'll put just a little bit in there. And it tastes like hot cocoa. No added calories except for that little dash of a protein shake versus cream, which has added sugar and the protein shake doesn't. You have that at the dojo. Um, the core powers, no, you have to buy those. I have the whey protein here, um, which you can buy for $49.99, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, the, core, the core powers, 
you you can buy at Kroger, Walmart. You can buy them in like a four pack, I think. Well, very good. Uh, you know, well, once, thanks, Tony, and uh, thank you everybody for attending. It's ten o'clock. We're going to wrap it up, and I just want to encourage you to to uh, to come out to our one million cups event from nine to ten, our inaugural event next Wednesday, and then join us for the for the. Uh, chamber online luncheon on thursday with our with our with our mayors of our local cities it's going to be great um